later, a little bit more with you later on. But right now, we're going to jump into a little bit of inside info on how that beautiful sound, the double felt grand, was created. And for that, we're going to welcome someone very, very special who is one of our most important Keyscape collaborators. He's a legend in this town, being one of the world's greatest and most in-demand piano technicians. Please welcome our great friend, the one and only Mr. Jim Wilson. Hi, Jim. Hola, James. Welcome, welcome. Good to uh, see you, James. Did you, did you mean to say he's a legend in his own mind? Well, well that too, I guess. If, yeah. <laughs> We think of you as a legend as well. Oh, thank you, man. Of course, of course. So, Jim, your list of clients is basically a who's who of music and has included everyone from Quincy Jones to Paul McCartney to Dr. Dre to Chick Corea to David Foster, Bruce Hornsby, Elton John, et cetera. I, I mean, it's probably easier to ask who isn't a client of yours right now that you've worked we with. <laughs> um, hang on, let me give that some thought. Um, George Santos okay. is, uh, is somebody I've done. Hey, wait, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being told that he actually tunes pianos. It says on his resume. I thought he's he a created piano. them all, too, didn't he? Yeah, he created, created the piano. Pianos too. I'm, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm um, extraordinarily grateful and, and blessed to have worked with kind of all my childhood heroes. And sometimes it's, it's just... Uh, it's overwhelming and I have to kind of stop and pinch myself and I'm just mm. so grateful. And before anything, I just want to say how grateful I am to Eric and the whole Spectrosonics team for the opportunity to work and create some great sounds together for over the last decade with Keyscape and Double Felt. And I'm uh, just the gold standard, you know, everybody there is just the best human beings. And yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. That's actually, that leads me into my next question. How did you actually get involved? In, in collaborating with us on Keyscape? Well, let's see. Mr. Persing uh, approached me back in 2014 and said, hey, we're working on this new library mm -hmm. of, of sounds uh, and signed this NDA, by the way. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we want to include a piano into this collection of virtual instruments and we'd like it to be yours. Wonderful. So, uh, oh, okay. So, right behind me is that piano. Wow. And uh, I said, uh, how about instead of a piano, how about the piano? And there's this thing that I've been doing for certain clients with, with all pianos, but uh, particularly the Yamaha, taking when, it, when the hammers needed replacing, removing the old hammers, putting on these Renner Blue Point Vikert felt hammers. And uh, they're my favorite mm. piano, piano hammers to use. And it's the, they were the, Hammers from the days of yore of uh, the golden era of Steinway. Wow. And then the Berlin Wall went up and then they became no longer available, that particular type of longer fiber felt. And uh, just recently in the past decade or so, they, they revived that, um, that process, that fi fiber, and uh, they've become available. So I've been doing that now and it's, it's with great results. And Wonderful. so that's what I did on Keyscape and, and that's what we hear on the Keyscape C7, the LA customer. That's exactly, yeah. Yeah, Wonderful. That, that one right behind me, yeah. So, talking about felt, um, moving on to the, to the double felt sound. So traditionally, when, when you think about a felt piano, um, you know, anything I've ever heard of when you're dealing with felt pianos, it's, it's an upper, yeah. right? Yeah. And, they, and they drape a piece of felt across, this, across the strings themselves. Right. But, right. but for the double felt grand, you actually used a, a grand piano. Can you explain yes. a little bit about the process of how you had that up? Because I, I would imagine that's, that's, that's a whole different setup. A bit different, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. So, um, yeah, Eric had mentioned that he, we talked about this and how, what a cool sound that is that a lot of composers are doing that and, and uh, taking an upright piano where the strings are like this and the hammer is like this and comes up and hits the strings like this, just put a piece of felt in between and it gives this really great muted, dark, warm vibe. Character, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and Eric said, I wanna do that with a grand. It's like, okay, uh, I'll get right on that. <laughs> well, there's this little thing called gravity. And um, so with the upright, the strings are like this, grand, strings are like this. So the hammer comes up and hits, hits it like this. Well, how do you put a piece of felt here? So I 
I marinated in that for a uh, couple of days and I, then it occurred to me, maybe it's easier to wear sandals than it is to carpet the whole world. <laughs> so I took a uh, piece of felt. Oh my gosh, what do we have here? Well, well look at that. Oh my, oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay, class. When you push the key here, the hammer comes up there. Observe. Eric, are you paying attention? There's going to be a test. Um, so no, I had this idea of um, instead of having one global piece of felt for all the hammers, what about individual strips of ham of uh, felt? So I went down to the uh, fabric store and got a ton of different types of, of uh, felt mm. and landed on this, which is natural wool. And I put it on the hammer thusly are we seeing this class class anyone oh, anyone yeah. bueller bueller <laughs> and um so the it comes up and hits the string and it's it's wow. muted and i i tried that uh, well yeah I, that works so uh and we went for uh, two pieces of felt to give it this really dark gorgeous you know otherworldly tone and and uh got them so thrilled with how it's is turned out and and the responses that everybody's you know giving it so so two pieces of felt so hence double felt grand that's 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 the name you're a fast one james There's man you picked yeah. right up on that <laughs> wonderful so i kind of always wondered that you know when we were first developing it and, and looking at saying double felt what, what, why is that say double felt so there it is that explains it so it just means it's twice as good multiple felts <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. I, I actually heard a rumor that there were some moments when you were making this that you thought you might pass out during the process. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the the there's this. It's like, oh, OK, great. Felt uh, 11 millimeters wide. Put it on the hammer. How do you fix it? Well, I tried <laughs> just experimenting. I tried with rubber bands. I said, no, you really need to uh, fix it properly. Mm. So I, I got super glue. And, a, and attached one end to one side of the hammer and then draped it over and then did the other one. Mm. But you have to kind of get right up on top of it. And people do not try this at home, please. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> what kind of glue? <laughs> oh, super glue. And it's not the kind that you would uh, yeah. <laughs> use as a recalcitrant teenager to, to go <laughs> off and have fun. This is the kind that gives you this roaring headache. Yeah. I'm not kidding. The day after we we did this hours and hours of applying each individual piece of felt yeah. two times to uh, the hammer, uh, I, I woke up the next day with this massive headache and yeah. Do not try this at home. And I was seeing some some questions in the chat that the, the actual piano itself that was used is, is also the C7, correct? It is a, uh, a a high quality instrument. A high as, quality instrument. Okay. So as, we don't, we don't know I what the saw in the description is. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, so, because I was people were asking on that. So, um, question: What's it like to hear your work that you've done in Keyscape used by so many musicians around the world? It's so gratifying, and um, you know, I, I'm a recording artist as well. I've had ten. CDs and a few times on the Billboard Top 20 Wonderful. and a couple of PBS specials and 95 million streams of my music I just found out. And So you made like but, $50 off of that, right? <laughs> streaming. Exactly. I'm going <laughs> to take you out to lunch. For yeah, excellent. Um, but that, to, to your question of what's that like, is, so that's the very piano that I created all this music on. Mm. So then to hear um, these great composers, film composers using it in their work it's just so it brings it full circle for me. And it's it's so gratifying to be uh, of service to their art and to to uh, create sounds and be a part of the music that's, you know, reaching people. That's wonderful. It's it's a, it's wonderful. I'm so beyond grateful. Excellent. Well, I heard, Jim, that you have an interesting book coming out soon. Um, what's that? <laughs> oh, well, it's about gardening, and um, there Wonderful. just aren't enough gardening books by piano technicians. <laughs> no, uh, oh gosh, James, you you got me. You know, this is uh, it's something that's been in the works for a, a number of years, and um, uh, I just had wanted to cobble all these fun stories together. That uh, you know, I've had the extraordinary fortune to be able to work with just about every hero I've ever had, and. 
there's this uh, moment in my life when I'm driving back from the south coast of England to London, a two-hour drive in a limo, hmm. where I've just had a magical four-hour hang with Paul McCartney, sitting on the same piano bench with him. Okay. <laughs> uh, talking about everything from, you know, the Beatles and and uh, singing a Beatles song. and I, I think I've heard of that band, yeah. This kind of surreal moment where... Uh, this, you're just going, okay, this is really happening. Yeah. You are sitting on the same piano bench with a beetle <laughs> and just be here. And uh, it, it was, and I'm just thinking, how the hell does an insecure West Texas kid <laughs> end up there? And then later limo rides with Elton John and, and road trips with Carol King and, and uh, horseback riding with Dan Fogelberg on his ranch. And so I, you know, just kind of thought, man, I, I need to cobble these things together uh, under one roof and just been hammering away at it. And then of course, there's the bigger narrative of me and my pursuit. What brought me out here originally to LA, I, you know, I wanted to become the next Jackson Brown and ended up instead becoming the next Jackson Brown piano tuner. So <laughs> life will take you some weird places. It'll take you <laughs> different places. And yeah, then I had a, sure. had a profound uh, moment in my life when, when a very close friend of mine died and I saw how easily uh, those dreams can kind of vaporize into thin air. Yeah. And that's what made me focus on, okay, well, what, what is really important? Is it just tuning for all these cool celebrities or is it about making some kind of artistic statement? So more on that later. This is the first that I've talked about this publicly and well, well, I'm definitely excited. It sounds like it's going to be a really interesting book. And, and I thank you, James. It's going to be one to, to look for, for sure. Oh, I'm, well, I'm honored. I want to thank you, Jim, for, for coming oh, in with us please. today here and giving all that information behind the scenes yeah. and, and sharing that. Thank you. Good luck with the book as well. Thank you. Thank you, James. Honored to be here.